The NFL world rocked by the tragedy of DeMar Hamlin on the field last night on Monday Night Football. All we can keep doing is praying for DeMar Hamlin. Dallas still stinks. You're by the way, King Dingbat here, and all I gotta say is this. All I gotta say is this today. The NFL world is shocked. It is shocked by what happened on the field last night between the Bills and the Bengals. And I've never seen anything like that. Uh, what happened to DeMar Hamlin last night was just one of the things you never think you're really going to see happen on an NFL field. Uh, my family and me, of course, like everybody else, we've been praying for DeMar Hamlin. We will continue. Hopefully the kid will make it. Um, obviously, he suffered cardiac arrest on the field, which is just absolutely the craziest thing. I mean, when that whole thing happened last night, I had just come home. I had just gotten home. I was just washing up. I had the game on in the background. And I come out, and everybody, I'm seeing players crying, freaking out. I'm going, what the hell happened? What the hell happened? Fortunately, I have DirecTV. I have DVR. So I was able to rewind it and then see the play. And I'm thinking, well, that didn't look like a big hit. Actually, the first time the play ran through, I kind of said, okay, nothing happened on the play and looked away and didn't watch Hamlin get up. And then when I rewatched again, I saw him get up and then fall. My first thought was, it was some sort of concussion. He had a concussion. Of course, that wasn't the case. It was cardiac arrest. And I've never seen it. I've never seen that happen. Uh, obviously, it looks like, and we'll figure out, we don't know all the reasons why uh, this happened. Um, of, course, of course, they got to run tests and things like that. But it looked like, from what it looks like, and we don't know yet, and I'm not a doctor, it looks like it had to do with the blunt to the chest that he got from T. Higgins. Somebody, by the way, I got to tell you, I feel very sorry for it. I've seen people actually blame T. Higgins like it's his fault. He's just playing football. He's just doing what he does all the time. I feel extremely bad for T. Higgins. I feel extremely bad for uh, DeMar Hamlin and his family. Um, I didn't know much about DeMar Hamlin. I mean, I knew who he was. I knew he played for the Bills. Didn't know much about his personality. Was looking at stuff about him today. Sounds like a great kid. So he will continue to be in my prayers, my family prayers, and hopefully... Uh, hopefully he'll he'll recover, and it will be really interesting to see what what the tests are going to show when everything comes out and we know what exactly happened. Um, this is something that I'll probably talk about in one of my channel membership videos. Um, I've got a, got some things to say on that, but a lot of that is just speculation. Right now, we we got to wait to see what the tests uh, show. Now, what's really crazy is this isn't the first time. This has happened, okay? Uh, this actually happened in, I believe, 1971 by a player called Chuck Hughes. He used to be an Eagle. He was an Eagle for a while. Then he was traded to the Detroit Lions, and he suffered. He died on the field. He suffered a heart attack uh, during a game. Now, a lot of that, I think, had to do with he had heart problems that the NFL um, really, or not the NFL, but doctors and stuff really didn't even realize he had, and he was playing with, with like, you know, really bad heart problems. I don't think that um, that was DeMar Hamlin's thing. I think that had to, this had more to do with impact. At least that's what it looks like. Um, but, of course, I would just be speculating because I am not no doctor, you know. But shout out to the medical and the first responders on the field at the time because they're saying that the timing, how quick you respond um, to a heart attack, how quickly he gets medical attention, it makes the difference between he lives or if he dies. So um, they were pretty quick to react, and, and it's amazing that they knew exactly what was going on and to and to get his heart beating uh, again. So just just crazy situation. And, and I, I know there's a lot of crazy takes out there, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. I just hope the kid is well. I hope and I will keep praying for him. It's absolutely a shame. And I do not blame the players for not wanting to play that game. If you see your brother on the field going through that, that last thing you're thinking about was playing. And if you can't go out and play this game uh, clear mind, uh, you shouldn't play. So I think 
postponing it, suspending the game, whatever. They did the right thing. The question is, is how? what are they going to do um, in terms of of calling this game and how it will affect the schedule and the rest of the stuff? I don't know. Clearly, the NFL world kind of has come to a halt today. The Eagles, they didn't even have press conferences with their coordinators or anything like that. A lot of the players, of course, on the Eagles team are shaken up, and for good reason. A lot of those players on the Eagles know him. Some of them, like Miles Sanders, they were player. They were, you know, they know him from when he was in college and stuff. So, um, it's a horrible, horrible situation. Uh, and and all we can say is, you know, you got to pray for the guy. Uh, that, that's really it. And uh, you know, it's the one thing that you really could take out of it too is look how quickly the Bengal fans, Cincinnati Bengals fans, and Buffalo Bill fans, how quickly everybody came together, how quickly the nation has come together to, you know, support this kid and pray for him. So that's good to see, but you hate you hate it to be under these circumstances. So hopefully he will be better. And uh, you know, it, it it really it really makes and puts things in perspective. That's really all I could say about that, you know. As far as some eagle stuff going on, I do I do want to talk about some bird stuff because uh, we do have a game this Sunday. And I, though it doesn't seem like a big deal at this moment, but it is coming nonetheless. And uh, I think a lot of it is going to have to depend on the coaching staff, what this coaching staff is going to do um, because they've got to be better. Uh I thought Steichen, I thought Nick Sirianni, I thought they were horrible. I thought they were horrible uh, with the game plan last week. They've acknowledged it. Nick Sirianni has even taken blame for that pick six. I can't blame him for the pick six, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to blame him for the pick six because Minshew threw it. But he didn't do any favors uh, for Minshew. So one last thing I want to talk about is my favorite player probably in the NFL, Devontae Smith. My man, Devontae Smith, because we have heard a lot about all the records the Eagles, especially their defensive line, have been breaking this year with the sacks, right? They broke a franchise record in sacks. You're talking Reggie White, Jerome Brown, Clyde Simmons. Unbelievable record to beat. And, and still, they have the possibility to break the league record for sacks in a season two this week if they have a big game versus the Giants. So we've heard about all these records, right? Four players with 10 plus sacks on your team. We've heard about it all, right? Um, but one record I think is very interesting and very good is one that Devontae Smith is about to set. Uh, that's right. Devontae Smith is tied right now with Irving Fryer with 88 receptions, the most ever by an Eagles wide receiver in a season, right? Smith's 88 catches are tied with Fryer's 88 in 1996 for most Ever by an Eagles wide receiver. And A.J. Brown, he's 84 catches, our sixth most. Since week 11, Brown has 616 receiving yards and Smith has 570. Only Justin Jefferson, 678, has more during that span. So over the course since week 11, uh, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith have pretty much been 1A, 1B. And that's what we thought that they were going to be. Uh, but Smith, you figure he his week one, he didn't have any catches. Remember week one, people were panicking. Devontae Smith's going to disappear in his offense. Devontae Smith is going to disappear in his offense. Um, he didn't have any catches. He still has 88 catches. He should break Irving Fryer's record this week. Um, I'm guessing, you know, another five catches or whatever. Uh, and he's four catches above A.J. Brown for leading the team in receptions. Devontae Smith is a pure stud. He's an absolute stud, absolute monster. He has gotten better as the season has gone on. He has shown you right now that he's an all-pro type receiver, all-world type receiver, who's only going to get better. And having A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, uh, listen, you're going to have them be around 88, 85 catches every year. Uh, when you're trying to spread the ball out, you might not have a guy with 110, 120 receptions or anything like that because they're throwing, they have multiple guys to throw to, even if you include Dallas Goddard. But for Devontae Smith, especially after going uh, zero catches week one versus Detroit, to come back, have 88 catches, over 1,100 yards, he's had a hell of a year. And he's going to end up leading this team most likely most likely, we'll see how it goes um, 
the last game of the season because A.J. Brown could go off for 10 receptions. But he looks like he has a pretty good chance of leading this team in receptions. Devontae Smith was worth the pick. Devontae Smith is that guy. To have him and A.J. Brown, absolutely fantastic. And I really think that they've started to use Devontae Smith in more ways than they did earlier in the year. I think a lot of stuff earlier in the year was short passes, short routes, those kind of things. They seem to stretch him a little more downfield now, and it's definitely turned out. Uh, Since week 11, Brown 616 receiving yards. Devontae Smith 570. Two wide receivers over 1,000 yards. That's pretty good. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a dingbat. Remember, it's Howie Vision. We're all just living in it. Obviously, DeMar Hamlin, his health is the most important thing right now. No question about it. But I do wonder, what is the league going to do? Uh, how are they going to fix the schedule um, in order to to make everything work? Uh, I, the only thing I can think of doing is, is either consider the game a no contest, and that's just the way it is. Those teams play one less game. Uh, I think they said that that would lock the number three seed in for the... Uh, Cincinnati Bengals and they will win a division. Uh, to me, that's the only really thing that you can do, or or you just call it a tie or something like that. But um, I don't really see much else much else that the NFL could do. Um, this really doesn't affect the NFC though, since these are two AFCs. It has to deal with the do with the AFC, not the NFC. So um, our conference uh, really is just gonna go on as it's supposed to, because it's not going to affect it. But with that said, Denzel Washington out.